All right, what I'm doing here is tying the car down. Um, obviously a car with this much horsepower, like we're pushing for 2,000 horsepower, uh, it's very hard to make it, um, the tyre actually grip on the rollers. It's very easy to get wheel spin. So we've got to tie it down extremely hard in, into the, um, the front and rear roller. So what I'm doing first, I've got a, a chain, which um, is on a pulley system, um, which the pulley's down in between the, the rollers. And I'm just going to hook that over there. Um, now that chain is attached to the airbag system down here, um, which just pulls on the, it's got about 100 pounds of pressure pulling on the chain which in turn pulls uh, on this bolt, which pulls the tyre down into the middle of the rollers. And we've also got uh, straps, which I've got a strap going through here, which is hooked onto one of the hooks, which is already on the car. Um, and that's to hold the, the car back into the rear roller. And on top of that, we might even run another strap um, down the ramps and over the front wheel to try and hold the car back. It's quite excessive, but that's sort of what you gotta do with the car with this much horsepower. If it was a uh, like a 300 kilowatt car or something, you you know you wouldn't need half this stuff, but something like this needs a lot of um, a lot of effort to hold it on the rollers. All right, I'm just setting the tyre pressures. Um, in shootout mode, you've got to have the tyre pressures at 40 psi, but um, I think I'll set them to 50 because in the past we've found high pressures to be beneficial to um, minimise uh, tyre slip on the rollers. The next thing is to hook up all the, the sensors that uh, are fed through the dyno, so I can monitor what's happening to the engine through the dyno. Uh, the first one is the boost pressure hose, the engine RPM, and also injector duty cycles, which um, is just basically the time the injectors are open versus the time that they're shut. And all this stuff um, just lets me monitor uh, everything through the dyno which is very helpful after you've done a run, you can go back through it and see if there was any issues anywhere. All right, I'm gonna give you a brief rundown on how the dyno works, for those of you that don't know, don't understand how they work. Um, the main thing that you look at when you're drawing a graph on the dyno is obviously the power. Um, the, the red line there is the power curve. Now that is graphed uh, along the bottom here against road speed or RPM, whichever way you wanna do it. Um, and the, the graphing on the side here is horsepower um, or, or kilowatts if it's in metric. Now you can graph it against a lot of things like we've got torque in this case. This example there is torque. But um, on a car like this, uh, boost pressure is very important. So you can bring up the boost pressure. And you can see there, that's the boost pressure there. So it's got maximum boost at maximum RPM, 30 pounds of boost. One of the important things is the weather station. So what it does is it measures the, the temperature of the room, the humidity of the room, and the barometric pressure of the day, uh, which changes day to day with the weather. Um, it's a wireless weather station, so it's always um, you know, adjusting the, the temperature, uh, the barrow, and the humidity, um, which what that does is it changes the correction factor to keep the power consistent. So on a, an example would be on a zero degree day in the middle of winter to a 40 degree day in the middle of summer, you'd, you, know, you should have pretty much the same power. This is a dual retarder dyno. It's got two retarders, one there and one here, uh, which can handle a lot of horsepower, um, which is an advantage of obviously over a single retarder dyno, which most shops have got. Um, what, what this is here is the retarder, obviously. These two things are the, the rotors, uh, and the yellow things in the center are magnets. It's called an eddy current dyno. Um, and what it basically does is the magnets control a load by um, you know, magnet, trying to slow down these rotors. Um, and when they do that, in, in turn the magnets, this lever here, which is attached to the magnets, is forced down onto the load cell, which is down here, which it might be out of, um, out of reach of the camera. But uh, what that does is that the load cell is um, calibrated through the, um, you know, the, the computer within the dyno. So the, the more this lever basically pushes on the load cell, the more power um, is shown on the, on the screen. Um, this is a hand controller, so I can pretty much control everything I need to uh, from inside the car. Some of the main functions is speed. Um, you can go up and down in 10 kilometre increments, one kilometre increments if you go side to side. So that uh, allows you to very accurately hold an RPM and load point, which is good for engine mapping. You can you know, sit in the one load point and get your fuel right or get your timing right or whatever. 
So to do a basic power run, all you would do is um, get to the RPM uh, you want to start the run at, you hit load, hold your foot flat to the floor, wait a couple of seconds, and then hit ramp. And that'll, um, that'll run the car through a predetermined uh, ramp speed, which is just how many uh, kilometres per hour per second. Uh, and you can adjust the speed of that. At the end of the run, once you've got to where you want to back off, you back off and at the same time uh, hit the load hold button and that just holds a steady load to bring the RPM back down. There is a lot of other stuff in there that we use but um, basically that's what we do. Alright, uh, we've just done the first shakedown run. Um, we just ran it off the, off the actuators, so no boost control, and it made 950 horsepower with no dry ice. Uh, now the first thing we do after we run up a car like this is check the data. And um, the good thing about this car is it's got an M800 MoTeC computer, uh, which Marty wired in pre summer that's last year. And the cool thing about that is it's got every, everything in the engine you could want to monitor is, um, you know, you can, you can monitor. Um, the examples are obviously engine RPM, but you've got fuel pressure, oil pressure, oil temperature, um, throttle position, all that sort of stuff. So it's, it's really good. And what we do after the run is we go through it and um, just check everything, like check the lambda from bank to bank, um, check the boost pressure, the intake temperature, and just make sure everything is as it should be. Um, and if everything's good, then um, you know, we'll add more boost and put dry ice in it and uh, make more power.